Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time On Target Morning Brief for Invest in Fighter Pilot Precision on a daily basis. Happy Friday. Happy October 8th to everyone. And thank you for everyone that attended the uh, third quarter investment advisory board meeting for Anchor Star Wealth last night. Uh, very cool. I think it went off okay. We have some things to improve on uh, for next time, but certainly information was across as mostly presentation things uh, to continue to improve on as we do that on a quarterly basis. But one of the things we talked about last night is one of the things that I want to talk about today is Tesla moving to Austin. That in itself isn't a huge deal. You know that several companies have moved to Austin uh, recently or moved out of California is probably more accurate. And some of which of those companies that have left California have moved to Austin. So when you think of the names like Palantir moved to Denver, uh, Oracle and HP moved out of uh, California. And now uh, we have Tesla leaving its Palo Alto headquarters and moving into moving its headquarters in Austin. We already have a plant here. It's completely huge. It's really neat to drive by <clears throat> as well. And they're going to be making the Cybertruck here uh, as well. And there's been rumored uh, that there was other moves that were going to be made here in the local area of Austin because we have a lot of land, not downtown. That's very compact, but certainly you, can, you don't have to get too far away uh, before you actually have some land, unlike cities like uh, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, which are kind of already spread out, uh, if you will. So uh, not necessarily surprised by the move uh, because Texas obviously has a lot of things to offer uh, in the form of, you know, no state income tax. Um, you know, who, who knows what other deals that Texas uh, used to incentivize Mr. Musk to use to bring his headquarters here. But we'll see. Um, but what I really want to talk about is, you know, Tesla is an investment. When people say, you know, why is Tesla stock, stock so expensive? Well, it's not just a stock. It's the concept of what the future is going to look like. And it's also interesting. There's a company called um, Hellbiz, which I hadn't heard about this morning, but they are partnering with uh, Move It. You may have heard of this app, uh, Move It. I guess it's um, it says it's partnered with Intel. I don't know if that means <coughs> Intel sponsored the app or has the uh, map portion behind it. I'm not sure of the relationship with Intel, but <clears throat> it does have one. And then Hellbiz is one of the companies that is in the news today. They're plus 8% on this announcement. But when you think of e-scooters downtown, uh, the scooters that are laying everywhere where, you know, a creepy van comes up and picks up like 10 or 12 of these scooters, uh, charges them overnight and then distributes them back around like the UT campus in the morning for use. Well, you know, that's a we have we all have to admit that's a legitimate business model. Uh, we travel quite a bit for volleyball, almost always in a bigger city, and these scooters are everywhere. Also, in addition to scooters, there's e-bikes and mopeds that are also under the same model. Well, this Move It app, evidently, we'll take a look at the website. Uh, I've never used it, but uh, going to the website real quick, you put in your location, where you want to go. It gives you your different options as far as where these different things are, these transportation options are, uh, how much it will cost. So how much it will take or how long it will take to walk to the scooter, you know, wherever it is. It's like, okay, it's two blocks away. And here's how long it takes to walk there. And here's how long it would take to scoot uh, to your destination. And here's what it would cost you. So pretty darn slick um, as from, for a city kind of, you know, mass transit perspective uh, to offer different options, especially in places pretty crowded like, option, like Austin. Now, will that happen in the car space? I talked about it last night during the board meeting. Uh, I do think it does happen. I think that's why... Tesla's price, I think Tesla's the odds on favorite in the investing world to be able to do this and, you know, put basically these Teslas everywhere, similar to the scooters that are laying everywhere. Uh, but, you know, Tesla's parked in certain locations throughout a city and, you know, maybe you can summon it, right? It can come to you versus where a scooter I haven't seen that happen yet, and that would be kind of creepy, right? To see a scooter just uh, whipping along to come to you. But uh, if we're talking two to three years, and we're talking autonomous vehicles as part of this, uh, they called it a micro mobility strategy in bigger cities. Uh, that's pretty interesting, and that would be a reason to own the stock. I also think you know about Apple and the iCar coming out, or Apple Car, or whatever it's called, uh, around the 23, 24 timeframe. Is that also is a reason to own Apple stock? 
Uh, I think Apple will will do better than Tesla in this space. We shall see. That is an unpopular opinion. Everybody else thinks Tesla will do it. Not everybody, but the majority thinks that uh, Tesla will take the lead in this area. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Our question of the day is how much should you have in an emergency fund and what's the downside of an emergency fund? I actually found Investopedia owning up to that an emergency fund can be a bad idea, again, depending on net worth and access to credit. <clears throat> So there's some reasons there. We'll get into that a little bit uh, later. As far as the day trading stuff, I have three longs for you. I have uh, HLBZ, we have Oatly, which is O-T-L-Y, and then QDEL. Uh, none of these are super attractive, so I'm not anticipating trading today. They're all low volume, and the futures are basically kind of flat in the market. So that's what I've got for you this morning. Um, if you're checking us out on replay, make sure you subscribe, hit the notifications bell. If you want to join us in the room, 25 bucks a month and to be able to communicate directly with me through a Q&A window. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Back here is the lineup card for today, October 8th. Standard Scam replies is a financial education presentation. You have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything here this morning. Full disclaimers information about full disclaimer is available at ototnow.com. Our mission objectives grow our money, protect our money, live off our money. Last night I talked in depth about some investment theses I have uh, as far as not only the fourth quarter of 21, but what are we going to invest in going into 2022 and the next you know, one year, three year, 10 year time frame? All that's available in the replay uh, hanging on uh, the either the Anchor Star Wealth Facebook page is probably the easiest way to find it or on YouTube under the on time on target briefings. So with that, we're talking about Tesla moving to Austin. Fantastic announcement. Uh, yes, there's a downside of traffic. Okay, yeah, if you win the lottery, you have to pay taxes. There's always a downside of things. But it's interesting, you know, you do have arguably one of the best transportation companies moving here. So when you think of Elon Musk and the, thing, the you know, different uh, ideas he has as far as, you know, traveling to, you know, colonizing Mars, uh, the boring company uh, bores underground. So basically taking, you know, <clears throat> Subways, except using Tesla's in them instead of a subway train, if you will. Um, you know, he, pretty smart guy. Uh, you know, arguably the smartest you, you could say, um, but certainly a visionary on how to solve some of these traffic problems. So anyhow, so we're talking about Tesla moving to Austin. I think overall that is a huge win for the city. Um, other things are going here. Nicole Kidman's uh, over in Hutto right now filming a movie. Ben Affleck is in town filming a movie. Machine Gun Kelly was spotted uh, this week. Uh, you know, we're in between our ACL festivals. So the popularity of Austin, uh, obviously, I think is going through the roof. All right, question of the day. We talked about emergency funds flow. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the, the market pretty quick. We'll come... Come, uh, we'll talk about where we are with the futures and we'll go right in the open. Then we'll kind of come back with our market review and where, where, where I think things are going. All right. We'll take a look at Tesla, Apple, and Intel. Since Intel has a relationship with Move It, um, stock has been beaten up, but maybe there's an entry point here. We'll look at the chart and make a decision on it. Contingencies and academic resources are standard. All right. Let's look at the futures real quick before we go into the open. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's CNBC.com. There's the Dow futures or the futures in the green across the board. Um, disappointing jobs report this number, but it hasn't hit the market. I still think we're on the kind of high, if you will, from the debt ceiling. We've kicked the can like we do uh, as a government. Uh, kick that can. We'll worry about it another month or whatever the, the date is. And we can kind of get back to the, the market going higher. So with that, let's pause this for right now. And then we'll come back and take a look at Tesla, Apple, and Intel uh, after the open. But give me a second and I will be right back with you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the on-time on target play of the day. You have four screens in front of you on the TD Ameritrade ThinkPipes platform. Let me get this shared out correctly. There we go. And now you have four screens in front of you and stand by for the opening bell. All right, market is open on a Friday here. You can see the futures kind of trending up and in the green. I have three longs for you. Uh, this is that Hellbiz uh, each H Hillbiz, excuse me, H I L B E Z. Uh, again, partnership with Intel's Move It 
is the what's driving the stock higher. You can see it's up 5% on the day. Uh, Oatly is an upgrade from Morgan Stanley to a buy. That's why you see it up 7%. And then this QDEL is an earnings report uh, up 7%, started to fade from that. Not in love with any of these. Uh, maybe this Oatly, if it would come in and switch higher, uh, but the rest are a little bit, uh, there's some things not to like about them, but we'll watch them here uh, during the open. All right, refreshing on another screen to see how the market's doing. Yep, all three are trending up across the board. So <clears throat> actually you see the uh, S&P dropping a little bit, but they're all still three still in the green, if you will. All right, you don't really have the traffic here in this uh, hill biz. And the Oatly is already kind of taken off. So plenty of volume, 250,000 shares, 80,000 shares in the first couple of minutes here. Um, we would need this to come in before it goes higher. And I don't really see it doing that. Um, <clears throat> we'll focus in on QDEL here. Again, volume is a little bit light, 35,000 and 20,000. Tough to trade. I have one more for you that's not on the screen. Uh, Vaxart, VXRT, you may notice, you may know this from the healthcare space is, get this typed in here for you. They have, a, you know, Merck came out with obviously the COVID pill. Why is that not typing in? All right, uh, Merck came out with the COVID pill. It does not appear it's going to let me pull up that ticker symbol. All right, so we're not gonna look at Vaxart. Uh, but they uh, they have a new COVID pill out similar to the Merck pill uh, that was announced, what was that, a week, two weeks ago? Um, so an oral option, if you will, versus a vaccine option to be able to battle uh, COVID. So uh, I do see the Oatly coming in here, not really in the mood to, uh, to, to hop on a trade, so we're going to leave that behind this morning. <clears throat> no trade for today. We did have a beautiful trade uh, Wednesday, didn't work out yesterday. Uh, and then taking a pass on today. All right, what's going on? If you look at the over the left side here, you have Clickstream up almost 9%. Alibaba is up 2.5%. Uh, Baba bounced pretty hard yesterday, right? So did all of the Chinese names. I talked about it last night. There's really the Chinese middle-class play, and there's, there's Chinese tech and Chinese retail, uh, if you will, are the places to invest. Have we received the all clear warning signal that China is a place to invest in? No, uh, but certainly I like it. And I would rather be a little bit early than a little bit late when China does finally bounce. All right, Ethereum up nicely. Palantir, some popular names, MSTR. Again, that's what I use for my Bitcoin proxy. Looking for CRPT. It's gotta be in here somewhere. There it is bouncing around. Hard, <clears throat> almost up uh, two thirds of a percent. Google, iBuy, Sky, a lot of tech names up. Let's see what's on the downside here. All right, a couple of uh, spec names up top there with WNRS. That's some power therapeutics at minus 3%. CRISPR uh, therapeutics um, uh, down 3% there. So some healthcare names down. Talked about airlines last night. That's Delta. I know some folks like those as far as opening trades. Yeah, you could either day trade or swing trade the airlines, but not something I'm going to hold uh, long term. That's my opinion, <clears throat> if you will. I know others disagree, and that's what makes a market, so that is okay. All right, that's what's going on. The individual names that zoom out a little bit to where were we in the big picture. Had really basically three up days now. So, uh, you know, big down Monday, three up days during the week. Made all that back. We're higher now, so we're still in our uptrend, just barely, right? Um, but if we march higher on, you know, today and on into next week, then everything is back to normal. So we shall see. We'll keep a close eye on it. When you go into the five-day chart, <clears throat> you can see kind of this. Uh, we'll get down zoomed in here. <clears throat> so pretty straight line up through uh, yesterday. Um, it did sell off towards the end of the day um, yesterday, but uh, still ended up in the green overall and then kind of flat for today. We shall see. Actually, S&P just went red, so keep an eye on it today. All right, coming back over to <coughs> cnbc.com. Share it out to the screen here. All right, there we go. So around the world, uh, Asia's in the green across the board. Europe uh, mixed, if you will. Bonds watching that 10-year, again, just keeps, keeps creeping uh, higher. I talked about the whole spectrum of fixed income last night. 
uh, for about five minutes. So if you want to catch that on the replay, talking about anywhere from municipal ponds all the way up to the credit space and how I think that's they're going to increase in popularity as the standard market, instead of making you know 20% a year, year over year, like we have been for a couple of decades, as that you know normalizes back more of that 10 to 12%. Well, gosh, if you can get 8% with very little risk or 10% with all the risk, I don't know, taking the 8% is uh, the, the way I'm gonna manage that unless you force me um, <clears throat> a little further out on the risk scale, but I have a lot of my money into stuff that I did not think I would have it in, but you know, as far as the credit space, but that's the, uh, the smart thing to do uh, right now. All right, gold and silver up a little bit and then crypto again, Bitcoin really looking at 54,000 level, <clears throat> again, up 25 or 30% in the past couple of weeks. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. It's one of my major themes for, for uh, fourth quarter, and it's really already made the big move. All right, as far as headlines, here's your uh, the big one there. Tesla moves headquarters from California to Texas. So obviously that's a, a big deal. And, you know, it's interesting. What would happen? You know, we've had states be in trouble financially before. Uh, but, you know, the size of California and with all these companies leaving, <coughs> you know, Raising taxes to generate more more revenue is kind of why people are leaving. So, you know, it'd be in, it'll be interesting to see the California experiment in a decade, right? Uh, as to what happens there. So, we shall see. All right, let's looking at. I wanted to look at this Move It app real quick. So, if you're not familiar, which I wasn't, <clears throat> so I went here again, uh, sponsored or partnered with Intel, uh, if you will. But basically, you pull this up, and you will uh, see that the uh, wherever you are in the city, you put in your starting point and end point, and it's going to give you a list of options as far as, you know, scooters, e-bikes, and mopeds that are available. And again, uh, you know, pretty slick on these sort of things. Obviously, there's parking apps that are downtown. They tell you where the parking spots are and how much they'll cost. And there's all this, you know, technology is pretty amazing. But when you look at it, uh, you know, this is, a, you know, micro mobility, if you will, and mobility as a service, which I hadn't heard that term, and I'm looking at the upper right here, uh, products for cities and transit agencies. So could you put cars in this? Absolutely, you could. And especially if we have self-driving cars. I'm still kind of, you know, I, I like to be pretty honest and transparent. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of old for the self-driving car thing. That scares me, uh, you know. Uh, even though I will absolutely tell you from a pilot perspective that the the weakest point in the whole you know airline slash cockpit experience is the human, right? <laughs> and most of the times you're just sitting there monitoring the autopilot anyway. Um, but the you know the, the the concept of having these cars, you know, I, it's going to happen. Whether you know I think it's going to happen or not is irrelevant, right? It's going to happen, and people are going to be more um, more in tune with it. Right. So the overall cost of individual car ownership, like I said last night, nobody can take my cars from me because I'm a car guy. But the I do agree that if somebody if I was having a discussion with a person downtown in their 20s, uh, should they own a car or not financially? Absolutely not. Right. Especially if there's other options available to you. And that's what this Move It app brings. That's what Tesla brings. So we'll talk about the Tesla stock here. Um, when you look at the, some of these ratios, why would you buy an $800 stock with a PE that's over 400 when you know, the average is in the 20s? Yeah, why are you paying 10X, 15X for a stock? Well, the idea is what if the city of Austin bought 2000 Teslas that were autonomous and you put them around the city as a transit option? Again, all of this is to reduce traffic. So if you get people to, you're basically time sharing, you know, if you think of your own vehicle and how much time it sits there versus how much time you spend in it over a day, week, month, you spend very little time in your car, unless you have a commute. But for most, you know, for, for folks that don't have either a large commute, uh, you know, two or three vehicles, four vehicles, four family per family that largely sit unused most of the time. You could sure clean that up if you went, okay, everybody gets rid of their cars and just uses the, you know, the public transportation cars that are sitting around, you know, kind of a stretch for the mind, kind of stuff movies are made out of, but certainly it makes sense from a pure logistic standpoint. So how do you reduce traffic in big cities? Well, you look for other options. This is one of them. And then of course the boring company that Elon Musk has, you know, taking things underground like a subway, except for using cars to do it where they zip under, you know, you get in your Tesla and it goes underground 
to take you under the city to your destination versus using city streets. I don't know, pretty smart. All right, so Apple, would I buy it here? No, excuse me, uh, Tesla, would I buy it here? No, um, <clears throat> you know, was it attractive here at 600? Not really, it's me. It was to some, and I do have some in the book. Uh, it's again, they're starting to make money, get more profitable. Uh, it's up to you. I think it's a great car. I think it's a terrible stock to, to own. So I don't really, that's me. So we wanted to look at Apple real quick. Uh, Apple's been hit lately. So again, up here around that 157 or so, what a month ago, down to 140 and change. Is it a buying opportunity? I think so. When you look at the numbers, they look a lot more normal, right? You're paying for what I would call the best company in the world, a PE of 28. It's like all day, every day, right? Um, so as far as Apple's moved, I still think it has a ton of upside, especially if the Apple car slash iCar comes out as a direct competitor uh, to Tesla, I think it could actually have the option of being better. And why do I say that? <coughs> Excuse me. If I can buy an iCar and at the dealership, I put in my Apple ID and immediately the iCar goes into my entire Apple network of phones, computers, uh, AirPods. I don't know. I pulled up my Wi-Fi you know, network access. And I have like 37 devices hanging on my Wi-Fi on a daily basis. It's like, what? Uh, you know, iPads, all of this stuff all works together like a champ. <clears throat> if you can buy a car, put in your Apple ID and immediately it's like you've owned this car forever. Uh, that's pretty impressive. That, 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 that's good stuff. Uh, so uh, again, excited about that in the future, not selling any Apple unless we're just trimming an oversized position, but um, really like it here. Last one we'll talk about is Intel. Uh, Intel gets kind of a bad rap and I'm, I'm guilty for that, for being old tech. And certainly if you look at the chart, uh, it's been, it was up at 68 or so back in April, down to 55 now. It really has kind of flatlined for a few months. So this is one of those names I would say, you know, two and a half percent dividend, <clears throat> 12 on the PE ratio. It's like, there's really nothing wrong uh, with the company or investing in it. It's just, what would be the catalyst to take this higher? That and, and that I don't know. Um, maybe there's a super secret behind the uh, behind the you know the wizard has some uh, super secret technology they're going to release. But you look at downsides to Intel. You know when Apple moved to its own chip and left the Intel chip behind, that's not good, right? Because Intel chip was the best chip out there forever. So <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily say don't invest in it, but I'm not sure what moves the stock higher. Um, you know, we'll see. Maybe it's a relationship with this move it and, you know, getting into the mass mass transit game. We shall see. All right. Last one thing I'm going to talk about is why emergency funds can be a bad idea. You know, it's a good idea, right? And traditional personal finance would say that you want to have three months of your pay. So if you make say 60,000 a year, that's 5,000 a month. So that would be an, that would be an emergency fund of $15,000 of straight cash money uh, sitting in the bank. So Okay, I'll buy that. Uh, you know, this is under the budgeting and savings thing, uh, you know, tagline and not investing. But you can do that. And yes, is that good money management? Sure, absolutely. And certainly, if you are not a savvy investor, that would be the best place to just put it in the cash. That way you have it just in case. But I will say, shout out to Investopedia, that they do actually at the, uh, <clears throat> at the bottom here, was kind of surprised by this. Where is it? Um, yeah, why is it a bad idea? Well, you can take that money you would otherwise put into an emergency fund and put it into something like a short-term CD, uh, or you could put it into blue chip stocks or a bond fund, which add risk, but gives you instant access to your funds if you need them. <coughs> so basically taking your emergency fund and trying to make money on it, which we used to be able to do at the bank, right? You used to be able to get that 2%, 3% at the bank, and you knew the bank was making a killing off your money, but you didn't care because you were making a little bit. Now you're making next to nothing. So that's where I tell folks, I care about that. I don't want my money sitting in the bank where they can make a ton of money off of me. Uh, but we you know back before when we split it, right? If I would get two, 3%, you get two, 3%. I don't know. High fives, good deal. Uh, good for you. Um, thanks for taking care of my money. But now, if I'm getting next to nothing and you're keeping all of the difference, it's like, that's kind of BS, right? So why don't I put it into a Schwab account where I can write checks out of my account, debit card out of my account and have instant access to the money? So something to consider. A little more of, a, again, mindset shift from the traditional. So, all right, that's what I've got for you today. Thank you so much for checking us out and we will see you back Monday. You have a good weekend.